Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Thirsty for Art. This is Yu Zhang. I'm so happy to be here because today we're going to talk about why and how it's okay if your clients don't know about art therapy, including potential clients too. And so I'm going to talk about actually how that's okay, but also how that can actually be a blessing in disguise too. Because <laughs> um, I know many of us art therapists struggle with this thing, this fact that art therapy is such a new profession and service compared to other types of services out there and other types of fields out there that people don't know what art therapy exactly is. They don't often have experience with it. They never met an art therapist in the past before, so they have no idea what art therapy is. They have just these kind of random guesses about what that could be like, but they never really learned about it, heard about it, or even talked to art therapists before, right? So that's often, you know, the case for a lot of people. <laughs> so I know that as art therapists, sometimes we complain how people confuse our work or ourselves confuse our therapists with coloring books, right? <laughs> and how people mistake us as art teachers sometimes, right? Or people think that we don't have a master's degree or they just consider us as not really related to maybe providing therapy or providing mental health treatment, although we can provide it in many cases, especially in the US. And we often come up against clients who are maybe not open to making art in sessions or they feel very hesitant about it because of their past experiences with art making, which was probably not pleasant. Um, it often happens with like uh, when we take classes in schools and things like that. And so... Um, you know, we we sometimes complain about these things, right? Because uh, it can be a challenge in our career. Um, it can really kind of affect our self-esteem as well. It can affect our self-image as professionals, as our therapists, right? It feels like, what am I doing? People don't even know what I'm doing. Um, does it really actually have value then, right? We sometimes question that. So... I know it can feel very discouraging at times when people don't know much about art therapy. But, you know, in my own career, I've realized a few things about offering art therapy to people, especially people who don't know about it. And talking about art therapy to people, right, online where there's a bunch of strangers who actually don't know what that is exactly, um, who don't know the thing at all and I've done that through like YouTube and blogging and and my all my other social media and my podcast and things like that so I've learned and realized a few things along this journey of sharing about art therapy with people who don't know about it online um, and so what I realized was that uh, it's actually not that bad if people don't know about art therapy and what exactly that is and I've actually found that there are some amazing upsides to it there are some advantages that we don't realize sometimes but there are uh, when people don't know much about art therapy right um, so I think there are I'm gonna go into depth about the four things the four things that I think are really great advantages actually they're you know, really good. <laughs> you know, there are reasons why it's okay if people don't know about art therapy or your clients don't know about art therapy, right? Um, so listen carefully. These are really, maybe it might really spark you to look at art therapy in a different way as an art therapist, right? Okay, so the first thing is I think that, you know, when people don't know about art therapy, it's sometimes really great because it's so new to people that they become very curious about it, right? People are like, oh, what is that, right? And so it becomes this really easy conversation starter. And that actually potentially 
and likely leads to booking as well or booking in the future sometime. Because the more that you talk about what you do, the more that you're actually naturally promoting yourself and your work and your expertise and just your art therapy service, right? And business. And so that is amazing. Like people pay to have those opportunities where they can talk about their work so that they can potentially get clients in the future. (laughs) But we as art therapists, it seems very natural for us um, because people often don't know about art therapy. So people are very curious to learn about it. People want to hear about it from the art therapist, what that exactly is. And so these easy conversation starting point can be really awesome for our therapists, right? That curiosity that people have just because of the fact that they don't know about our therapy, it can be such an advantageous thing, especially for those of us who are self-employed and we have a business and it is our kind of role to share about art therapy, to promote it, to market it. And this is actually a very natural way to do it. So for me, I often, you know, stumbled upon people when I say, oh, I'm, I'm an art therapist. In the past, when I was, especially when I was uh, kind of employed in agencies, when I talked about it, or when I said I'm an art therapist, people always were like, their, their eyes would kind of light up and they would ask me many different questions. But when I think about it in retrospect, those were really great opportunities for me to just get potential clients in the future if I was self-employed in those situations, right? So I think that is one of the really awesome advantage of being an art therapist and just people not knowing about art therapy. The second thing is that when people don't know about art therapy, um, you become a kind of this rare expert, right? You become this really uncommon expert in something very specific. And so when people get to know you, when people stumble upon you, when they meet you, when they hear about you, you become this kind of go-to person for art therapy because there's just not a lot of art therapists around them, right? They don't know art therapists, Uh, It's just uncommon to meet one. And so when they do meet you, (laughs) the art therapist, they're like, you know, you become this go-to person for anything related to art or therapy or creative healing, things like that, right? And so when someone thinks about art, therapy, healing, or something like that, or your, your specific niche, perhaps it's about anxiety, let's say, then, you know, when they stumble upon that, kind of topic in their everyday life. Maybe they talk to someone they know, maybe talk to a colleague, maybe they themselves or their child is struggling with something. And naturally the thought, oh, who can help me, my daughter or my colleague, they'll come to think of you because you offer this really specific thing that's rare, right? Um, And so whenever they come upon this like related subject in their life, immediately think of you because you're the only expert in in that thing, right? (laughs) Um, And so you become this kind of rare expert and that is a good thing because um, one of the biggest reasons is you get to be this kind of um, go-to person and often people will refer people, potential clients to you because they're like, oh, that's, that's one person I know that you can get help from. So they'll refer you because they only know you (laughs) who's the art therapist, right? And so it is a really great opportunity if you're a uncommon expert, if you're really niche down expert, it's a really great opportunity because people can refer you all the time whenever related, like whenever the opportunity comes, right? Whenever there's a chance for people to think about something related to what you do, right? And so really great for referrals and word of mouth kind of getting clients. And so that's really awesome because you don't have to exactly do something to get those referrals um, through word of mouth. It's just, you are just doing what you do and people know you naturally, you know, and they just remember you, right? Because you're just this really rare person who does this very specific thing. And that's a really good thing because they can refer you. (laughs) Um, And so I think that is one of the really great 
advantages of being such a kind of uncommon expert and helper, right? Everybody in the business world is like, you got to niche down. You got to be specific with your ideal clients, what you do, what you offer. There's a reason for that because when you are very specific, you become this go-to person. You become this person where people always refer to you, right? Um, so that's the second thing that's awesome. Uh, the third thing that is awesome and it also makes it okay to be this really person that not a lot of people know about and not a lot of people know what you do. Um, the third thing is really your services are worth more because it's rare. So your service, because it's not that common, it's not the everyday thing that people get help on, get help with, right? It's kind of rare and unique and specific and uncommon. And so your service automatically becomes a specialty. You already have a specialty if you're an art therapist, right? Even if you don't specifically define who exactly you want to work with, even just offering art therapy to everybody, that is still automatically a, you know, a specialty. And always, you have to remember, special, specialized service is always highly valuable, right? Because you don't, you can't get it commonly. You can't get it easily sometimes, right? If you had, for example, if you were to build your own house and you have this really exact vision of what you wanted to build, Right? It was very specific, maybe very, um, very niche, very uncommon style of building. Uh, let's say I'm just thinking about this like tea house, Japanese tea house. Let's say that's something that you wanted to build in your backyard or something. Now, someone who can do that exact thing is very hard to come by in the US, right? Especially, right? Uh, um, someone who can actually really build a tea house that is accurate to what it really is, what it really has been in history, right? Maybe like a mid-century style tea house. I don't, I have no idea <laughs> uh, what exactly their, uh, the types are. However, um, you get the point, right? Like it's rare to come upon someone who does that type of construction. And so of course their services are going to be higher. You would expect that from any type of service or any type of thing that is rare. Like why are diamonds more valuable, seen as more valuable and worth more than other gems? It's because it's so rare, right? <laughs> uh, it's not as common as the other gems around, right? And so with rarity comes a lot of value and worth because it's just something very precious, right? And there's more, we often put a lot of, value into something that's more precious, right? And so voila, <laughs> just the fact that you're an art therapist, um, your services can be seen as worth more and more valuable be because it is rare and pe because people don't know about it, right? Rarity is also because rarity and people not knowing about what you do kind of comes together, right? It's just uncommon. Your service is uncommon, so people don't know. <laughs> um, but that really leads to your services actually being worth more. And the last thing that I think really makes it okay and even awesome that our therapy is not that well known, especially to our clients, is that you can have a lot of freedom in your work as an art therapist. Right? You can be really creative with your services. And that's because the field is still in its kind of, I would say, early stages. Um, it's still very young, I think. Uh, and so it's just still being kind of established, right? It's not yet tightly controlled. It, it's not yet too bureaucratic, I guess, and... and many places in the U.S. And so, you know, a lot of the states, they don't have licensure. They don't have rules. They don't have this kind of like definite structure like many other related uh, professions, right? Like social work, let's say, or um, even counseling, right? So you, the field itself is so 
fledgling is still being established and so there's not a lot of like rules all across the board and so you have a lot, some freedom right we have uh quite a lot of freedom actually to mold your career to whatever you envision right um you know sometimes i think that you know not having the license not having some structure um not having that kind of history behind your profession like a counseling <laughs> or social work um you know can feel kind of challenging and hard and difficult um and i felt that too in my in my own career when i you know especially when i just started out doing this work as an art therapist it felt like oh there's no structure kind of i mean it's kind of weird where one day you have everything and another day you know you can do anything there's no nothing to guide you with right and there are some downsides to that you know when you don't have that kind of guidance and structure right um but however i think of it this way these days it's like you actually not having all those rules and those red tapes sometimes you know you can actually have a lot of freedom right um you can have a lot of creativity in what you do, right? Even just think about the example of like a state without any bills about rules or guidance about art therapy, which means that you can actually start a private practice right then and there, right? Once you get your master's or have your own business, start your own thing, and it's easier than in a state where they do have like these strict boundaries and strict uh, rules and establishments right and you know because in those cases there's so much more involved before you be, you can actually start your own business and practice so yeah sometimes it's nice to have that freedom for me it was really nice i think um and i think that if you are really the creative type this can be such a great advantage for you because you can really take it creatively you can really make creative services with what you know so those are the four things that make it okay even when our clients or potential clients don't know exactly what art therapy is or what we exactly do as art therapists and i actually think it's not just okay but it actually is very advantageous it's actually great it's a blessing kind of in disguise <laughs> um, and so i want you to kind of take away from this video or episode um, just this idea that it's okay to flip the narrative that people not knowing art therapy is a curse because we often I know we often think about that as art therapists yes it can be frustrating when we are seeking acknowledgement and validation from others in terms of what we do as art therapists however when we feel good about our worth and when we see our own value in this service, in our therapy, like really see this value, that energy, right? That energy becomes contagious. That energy becomes this really attractive force that brings in people, that makes people curious, that makes people open to learning what our therapy is, right? I think that is always like, it is a inner process, right? It starts from you inside as an art therapist when you know, when you feel good about your worth, when you see your own value as an art therapist and the value of what you do, that changes people's attitudes, right? Changes um, the situation where it actually becomes advantageous that people don't know because it's an opportunity opportunity for people to learn more about you become curious about what you do right ask questions to you and um see you as the go-to expert and you know and see your services as worth more than any other more common services out there right and so i think that when we see it differently and that's the reason why i share these things today when we see it differently we allow others to see our services and our what we do differently so i know that um to know a rare and obscure thing what we <laughs> what we do what we know right which is our therapy 
To know a rare and obscure thing can be lonely and sometimes hard to explain to others, definitely. But to know a rare and obscure thing, you can actually feel like you have something special that nobody else knows about or nobody else can offer or nobody else has, really. Like, think of it that way, right? When it feels special to know what you know, right? So which feeling do you want to choose? Do you want to choose the difficult path of feeling just very unvalidated with what you do as an art therapist? Or do you want to choose the path where you see the value in what you do? You see the specialty, you see the uniqueness of what you offer and you celebrate that, you share about it and you spread the love that you have about this day. Which one you do you want to choose? Which feeling do you want to choose? <laughs> All right. So I hope that this was really helpful to kind of change your perspective on how people not knowing art therapy can be an actual blessing in disguise. <laughs> All right. So hope you have a great one and I will see you in the next video and episode. Bye-bye.